get your shit together. Get your shit together. You know why I say that? Because you're on YouTube looking up how to get over somebody that you never dated. Why did you let it get this far? First of all, this is a safe space. I know it doesn't feel like it yet, but we do tough love over here, okay? So if you're okay with that, then keep on watching. Today I'll be talking about how to get over someone that you never dated. We're talking about that while we cook, and today we're cooking beef short ribs with Korean cheese corn, some cabbage, and some rice. First of all, I want to start off by saying you are not stupid, okay? I may have made you feel like it for 30 seconds. We have all been there. We have all held on to some type of false hope that somebody set us up with that we thought would lead to a relationship and it didn't. I remember my first situationship was 2014. Yeah, 2014. And this man, <laughs> I was young, this was 10 years ago. This man led me on. He was one of those, you know, let's just, let's just take it day by day and just like see where it goes. You know, like I'm open to whatever, but let's just like go with the flow and like, you know. And I would eat it up. I ate it up and I was like, yeah, like me too. Like being a pygmisha, like I was like, yeah, let's go with the flow, I'm chill. <laughs> so anyways, this man led me on for like nine and a half months. I know, nine and a half months. And I kept saying, so like, what is this? What are we? And he's like, I really like how things are going. And anyways, long story short, one day we ended it and uh, I had to get over it. And in my mind, it was like we were dating, you know, I just like it felt like we were dating. We weren't. But it's just funny because I remember just like feeling like it was the end of the world for a couple days. It didn't last long, to be honest, because I really didn't like it as much as I thought I did. It was more infatuation. However, like I thought that was heartbreak at the time. And then I really had heartbreak and I was like, oh, wow, that was nothing. Um, because heartbreak is no joke, you know, when you're having heartbreak. But that's not to say that when you go through a situationship or someone that you didn't really date, that you don't feel, you know, the pain of the loss or the grief. So let's talk about it. So I know there are many different situations that we could really be talking about right now. So there are situationships, okay? People that lead you on for a long time, that you get really attached to, that you eventually realize this isn't going anywhere. There's people that you aren't compatible with. So that's, for example, somebody that you may fall for that you realize you don't really have anything in common when it comes to the important shit, um, but the feelings are there. So you can't be together, but you still gotta get over it. Then you have those friends that you fall for that it just won't work. Either you don't wanna risk the friendship or there's other external factors preventing that. So you kinda gotta just like get over it because you know you can't date them but you just gotta deal with the emotions that come with falling for them. You also have the situations where you want somebody but they don't want you back, so it's like, you never dated them, but you know you can't, and you're like, ugh. Then you have those people that you go on a few dates with and you feel like it's getting serious and then they ghost, or you realize it's not gonna work out, or they meet someone else, you know? When in the casual dating phase, like anything can happen, so then they just disappear, or you stop talking and suddenly, you gotta get over somebody. And then we have my personal favorite, the person in a relationship. You accidentally have feelings for somebody that's in a relationship. You can't do anything about it, so you just kind of got to get the fuck over it. And no matter what situation, you're kind of fucked, and now you're stuck with all these emotions that you don't really know like what to do with them, and you're like, I'm feeling things, but I feel like I don't really have the right to feel things because I didn't actually date them, and they never met my family, and you know, we never talked about kids, but I still have all these emotions, and I'm sad and I want to get over it. So if you're in that state, whatever your situation may be, hopefully this video helps you. I will be right back because this is getting loud. Okay, the beef is getting a little quiet now. That's the rice. I'm about to put this corn in the oven and then I'm gonna tell you guys how I get over people that I never dated because I've done it a few times because I was foolish in the past, but not anymore. I joke around, but in all honesty, can you shut up? You know, I joke around and such, but like in all seriousness, I am past this phase of my life. I think that I've given uh, my attention to way too many people that have made me think that we were on the path to a relationship and I foolishly fell for it in the past. I've moved on from that. Now I am a very intentional dater and I make sure that anybody that's seeking me out and 
courting me that is so loud and courting me is on the same page as me um if not i'm not interested that's why i've been celibate for a while now and i haven't been dating anyone consistently for a while now because i just i don't have the time for it anyway so i will tell you how i've gotten over my situationships because heartbreak and i are not friends and i feel heartbreak really deeply and i feel these emotions really deeply so if you're like me then i hope you're okay so the first thing that you gotta do <laughs> is you gotta ask yourself, you gotta really sit down and ask yourself, I'm talking, get a journal, get some candles, get some incense, sage your place out, and just sit with the intention of really getting honest answers from yourself. Ask yourself, did I really like them? Or the idea of them? What is it about this person? I have this video called like, stop over romanticizing your love interests. I basically touch on how we over romanticize the people that we're interested in by putting them on a pedestal. We kind of make up 80% of the personality in our brain so we think we really like them but then we really just like the version of them that we created in our head. And it's just like this weird imaginary love that we almost have. So the reason why I tell you you should ask yourself that question is because there is a high chance that you saw a lot of potential in that person or you have aligned values or you know you want the same things in the future and you think that that's enough to keep you going because you're holding on to oh they check this box they check this box they check this box but like what about the other four that are very important have they checked those off or are you convincing yourself that you're okay with this because you really like the idea of a future with them and honestly, I get it. Like, it's very easy to over romanticize someone and to have like little fantasies about what could be, but like, make sure that you're not falling for that version of them. Make sure that you're falling for the version that's right in front of you. So, if you do really like them and not the idea of them, this will be harder of a process because that means there are real feelings there. But if you sit with yourself and you come to the realization that you liked the idea of them, then just know that this is going to be a quicker process than you think it is because once those rose colored glasses are lifted, and you see them for who they really are, you'll be over in a second, trust me. The second thing that I need you to do is to write a list out of all of their pros and cons relative to being in a relationship with you. So like, pros and cons are great. Like you'd be like, oh, they're funny. Oh, they are messy. Like, yeah, those are pros and cons, but we're talking things that are really gonna affect you. So how do they make you feel? good or bad did they make you laugh a lot okay then the pro is they made me laugh i know that they made you laugh and them being funny sounds similar but we're really trying to bring this back to you this isn't about them okay so just try to always relate it to you when you make this list so i'll give you another example a pro could be he made me feel protected and safe a con could be he was broke and i didn't feel taken care of or provided for i want you to keep going with this list until your cons list is longer than your pros so one of the situationships that i had it was mostly cons like he was inconsistent he would disappear at times he was impatient with me again this was 10 years ago this is not something that i would accept today he was really stubborn so that meant that he wasn't ever compromising with me those were a couple cons and then like some of the pros were like family values very much aligned and rich family long money <laughs> really fucking tall they were shallow this was 10 years ago but you might find that like your pros list are quite shallow and all surface level things and your cons list are things that are really affecting you like does he make you feel insecure do they make you feel seen does she make you feel protected like check in with yourself the next thing i want you to do is i want you to get in a dating app Listen, you don't have to take my advice, but a little bit of validation never hurt anybody. So go download Hinge, go download Tinder, and remind yourself of what's out there. Honestly, this can backfire if you're really set on that one person, you feel like there's nobody better out there for you, and then you open up Hinge, and the first thing you see is some man talking about he likes pineapple on pizza, watches anime, and loves his mom, and you're just like, this is what's out there? This is what's out there? And then you have a mental breakdown, because you're like, oh my god, he was the one that got away, blah, blah, blah. like, trust me. There are so many people on this earth, like there really are. And I say this, and I really could have heard myself say this, like, I don't know, six months ago, this would have been great advice that I would have loved to listen to, uh, even though it's very common sense. There are so many people on this earth that <laughs> that person is, is not always the one that you think that they are. Okay, I have to walk away for a second because the kitchen was kind of going crazy, but our rice is done and super fluffy. Oh my God, the pan looks... I've already packed up my rice cooker for my move. Oh wow, we have some catching up to do. I'm moving, that's another story. The short ribs are looking extra juicy. Delicious. And the corn is about to come out of the oven. 
Never mind. It needs a little bit more of a bake. We're gonna talk as I prep my little salad. It's literally just gonna be white cabbage, carrot, and purple cabbage with a sesame Asian style dressing and some sriracha for some spice. It's gonna be a very basic salad. The next thing that I need you to do is I need you to let this sink in your brain, okay? Two things. One, if they wanted to, they would, period. If they wanted to, they would. And the second thing is, what's meant for you will not miss you. Let's talk about these. I remember a relationship that I was in at one point in my life. I had constantly made excuses for why they weren't doing certain things. Oh, he can't do this for me because, you know, like he's has to take care of himself and his family right now. He doesn't have enough funds. Mm. Listen, I didn't need much at the time. That has changed, but I did not need much at the time. But the things that I wanted from my partner, he was not giving to me. And it wasn't because he had to take care of himself and his family first. It was because he simply didn't want to. And I just could not get that through my brain. I literally would constantly make excuses. And then after three years, I was like, oh, that, this hasn't changed yet, has it? And, and it really sat with me where it was like, it's not that he can't, it's that he doesn't want to because if he wanted to, he would have found a way by like six months in, but he got too comfortable and I got too comfortable. So if you're with somebody right now or you just ended something with somebody right now and you're just like, oh, you know, he always told me he'd buy me these things, but like he just never got a chance to or oh, you know, we're supposed to check this place out, but mm, you know, we got busy. If they wanted to, they would, that simple. So stop making excuses for them and start looking at them for who they truly are and recognize that all of the things that you wanted from this person, somebody else will give you that. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper to this. The other thing that I mentioned is something that I would really like for you to repeat to yourself is that what's meant for you won't miss you, I promise you that. There are so many situations that I wanted so bad at the time and now in hindsight, I look back and I'm like, wow, thank God that those were never handed to me because they were never meant for me and they would have never served me. They would have never fulfilled me. I'm not just talking about people. I'm also talking about job opportunities, experiences, whatever the case may be. When something's not meant for you, it will pass you by and that's okay. So stop trying to hold on to it when it's on to the next destination. Just let it go and wait for what is meant for you. And yes, I'm talking about the person that you're trying to get over. If they were meant to be your partner, they would be your partner. It's that simple. And if you think that there's potential in the future, maybe you guys gotta both grow up and go through some things and evolve, like, cool, that could happen. I'm not saying it's impossible, it is possible. But don't hold on to that idea, don't attach yourself to that outcome because you don't know what could happen between now and then. You could be missing out on the love of your life because you're too focused about, mm, maybe in two years we'll get back together. You know what I mean? The cheesy corn is ooey gooey out the oven. I don't know if you can see it, but hold on. Bro, this is overwhelming. There's just no space to put anything because there's so many things that I cooked. Okay, guys, give me a second. My next set of tips are three that you probably don't want to hear, but you should definitely do. Cut off all the mutuals, mute their socials or unfollow if you're ready for that, and go no contact. There's absolutely no reason why you need to have their homie and their homie's girlfriend and their cousin and their brother on socials. Delete them. Just please just delete them, no need to be in contact. If you know this isn't going anywhere, take the L and move on. The more you see them post, it's gonna trigger you. When the person who you're trying to get over is in the background of their stories, it's gonna get to you. You're gonna fall down a rabbit hole of creeping. It's just, it's not a good part of your healing process. So please remove them from socials. Then of course, like I said, it's very important to mute the person you're trying to get over or unfollow them. Honestly, I just feel like, why keep them there? Why? When I went through my breakup, I unfollowed him. When we broke up, I said to him, just so you know, don't take it personally, I will be unfollowing you. And you know, if I ever feel like following you, I will. If not, I won't. So communicate it if you want to, but just why have them there? And if you do feel like you want to keep them there for some reason, mute their stories and mute their posts. You will forget that they're even there. Trust me, eventually. It'll take a while, but yeah. And of course, no contact. It's very self-explanatory. Stop talking to them, don't engage, don't call, don't text, don't nothing, because every time you do that, it reopens something. Trust me, I, I know, <laughs> trust me, I know. 
you don't need to be speaking to that person. If you're doing no contact and you're going just fine and suddenly the communication is open again, you're gonna find that you end up right back where you started and that's not what you need right now. You need to heal, get over them and go no contact. And then if you feel like you wanna to talk to them in the future, maybe do that, but I just feel like there's never really a need. Time to plate our food. So we're gonna start off with the cabbage mix. Some short ribs. Ooh, I put really fatty pieces. Let me put some nice meaty pieces. Yeah. Some rice. This is the worst spoon to use, but hey. Okay. This is hot, so I'm gonna stabilize it with the tongs. And some cheesy corn. And then garnish with some sesame seeds. I say that as if you guys are following along. I know none of you are following along. You're just watching and you're hungry. I'm so sorry about that. Okay, we're gonna try this and then we're gonna get on to the last one. So I guess we'll try the short rib first. That was good. Let's try the cheesy corn. Very hot. Finished up. Mm. Wow. I should have made more to be honest. More cheesy corn. Let's try the liquid salad. <laughs> Honestly. Wow. I can't believe my situation chips have let me go. They really don't know what they're missing out on. And that's okay. My last piece of advice is the best way to get over someone is to get under someone else. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm actually kidding. I'm very celibate. Um, my last piece of advice is to just allow yourself to feel everything, but don't ruminate in it. Go through all the emotions that you need to, cry it out, sit with it. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Just allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. Yes, like maybe it was a three month fling and you're crying for five days. That's okay, that is okay. We've all been there. Sometimes the feelings get deep really fast and you just can't help it. But allow yourself to take something from this and learn from it and don't put yourself in this situation again because you don't deserve that. Getting over someone you never dated is tough because people don't really take it seriously. You don't feel like you have the support from your friends because it was just like such a small fling. A lot of times things happen so fast that you don't even have the chance to tell your friends how you're really feeling. So they don't really see it as anything serious. So they don't show up for you in the way that you wish that they would. But you also feel silly vocalizing that you need them because you're like, it was just seven weeks. Like, why am I crying over this person? So I understand what you're feeling. Just know that your feelings are valid, but don't sit with them for way too long. Like, give yourself time to feel, but then get up and keep going. Get on those apps, get some validation. That might be bad advice, I don't know. And always remind yourself that the person that you're meant to be with will choose you. You will not be doubting how they feel about you, you won't be questioning it, you won't be waiting for years or months for them to validate their feelings for you and tell you that they want you. They will choose you and they will make sure that you know that they chose you, so just keep that in mind. Overall, just know that you will get through this. This too shall pass and time heals. All wounds, oh my god, that sounded so cliche, but I'm telling you, like, time heals everything. You're gonna get over this. Learn a lesson this time, get over what you're going through, and move the fuck on, okay? I have a bowl of delicious food that I seriously need to get to before it gets cold. I have a thing where I need to eat all my food, like, pretty hot. Mm -hmm. I was already cooling down, so I gotta go. But, um, if you're hungry, go get some food. And uh, enjoy the rest of your night or day or afternoon. I don't know.